I was sent this post from the breakups subreddit. And basically this man is feeling the consequences of his own actions. He asked the question, why did I let her leave? And then he answers it for us. He says, as the title says, I let the love of my life leave me eight months ago and I can't get over her. We dated for almost two years, lived together for over a year. I'm 42, she's 39. She's the first woman I really loved. I mean, love with every cell in my body kind of love. I was going through some personal sh and was depressed. She was always supportive of me. Then she started going through some sh and rather than support her, I told her I wasn't sure I wanted to be with her anymore. I was being selfish. Well, she packed everything she had in my house and was gone. No contact, gone. I have a dog that adored her, probably loves her more than he loves me. And the worst part of all of this is that I had no idea what I had until she left. For some reason, I always had this thought in the back of my head. What if there is someone better for me out there? You know, I really felt like I was settling with her. That's how I felt when I had her. And right after she left, um, when she first left, I was on a dating app that day, talking, texting, chatting, meeting for coffee, drinks, dinner, whatever. I was not picky, hooked up with a number of women. The entire time, I'm like, wow, she's cute. I like her. See, I did settle. Well, guess what? That was eight months ago, and no one is like my ex. No one cooks like her. No one dances in the kitchen like her. No one laughs like she did. No one looks at me the way she did. No one wants me the way she wanted me. She adored me, would do anything for me. Now, with hindsight, I think that is why I felt like I was settling. I believed I all women, maybe all women I dated, would love me like she loved me. But guess what? That was a once in a lifetime, if you're lucky kind of thing. I asked the love of my life to leave me. What an idiot I am. This is the biggest mistake I have ever made. Only I didn't know I was making it when I did. So since I spent the eight months after she left living the big single life, I didn't break the no contact rule and text her until a couple of weeks ago. I told her everything about how much I love her and what a huge mistake I made. She tells me she's in a new relationship, although not in love, um, although not in love with him. But she is not sure she can trust her heart with me again because I hurt her so much. I would give anything to have a do over with her. Anything. I don't need anyone to tell me I'm a selfish dumbass. I know this. Another d dumb thing I did was not tell my family and friends the exact reason we broke up. They all believe it is 100% her when that is not true. But I have since confided in my brother the truth of everything. That did help me some, but it does not bring her back to me. I know I made some mistakes, so go easy on me. If this story helps one other person put their partner in a better perspective so they don't screw up like I did, it was worth sharing my misery, ignorance, and self-centeredness. The grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. You simply need to water your grass, my friend. Now, I want to go back to this part. So she was there when he was going through some things. He was going through it. She was there picking him up. She was cooking. She's laughing. She's just looking at him adoringly. And then when she started going through some sh and rather than support her, I told her I wasn't sure I wanted to be with her anymore. Please know and understand that this is because women are a wife appliance. We're their happiness machines. We're there to entertain them. And so if the wife appliance or the happiness machine starts to malfunction and it's not doing its duty, which is to make them happy, to do a little to do a little dance, to make them smile, to cook and do all this little, th we're, we're a happiness machine. And when the woman starts showing some humanity and going through some things and she's not being that happiness machine anymore, it's just like, oh no, the wife appliance is malfunctioning. The happiness machine is malfunctioning. I need to get rid of this one and upgrade. Until such time that women are seen as full humans with a broad spectrum of emotions to be able to go through things, to be able to go through the human experience, until we seen as that, it's easy for them to take us for granted. But this woman says, oh, you don't want to be with me? I bet I got something for you. You don't appreciate all of the things that I have done thus far, taking care of you, supporting you, loving on your dog, cooking, all of that. You don't, you don't appreciate that. 
I bet she pulled herself up and extracted her from the situation and then went no contact. Bam. More women need to do this. Stop groveling and begging and pleading because our absence will show how important we really are. Too many of them don't know and understand that we are like the bringer of so much. And he's sitting up here trying to find all of that, tap into like tap into women to try to find another wife appliance to like plug, like it's a plug and play type of thing where all of us are going to have a different type of human experience that you have to learn and get to know and all of that. So yes, he missed out. And I think that more and more of these people need to feel the absence of women. Women need to extract themselves. It's like, you don't appreciate me? Cool. I bet I got something for you. And this is one of the reasons why I talk about having a plan B, C, D, E, F, G, elemental P, and being able to survive regardless of relationship status, because you need to be able to pluck up and move on if it's not serving you the same way you need to be able to set yourself up for any situation that's no longer serving you to extract yourself. Let's get into a few of these comments. There weren't many on this post. Sweet Strawberry says, I won't say you're a selfish dumbass. I will say I hope you end up with what you deserve and it isn't her. <laughs> yes, she deserves better. Last Bench says, first of all, I'm glad you were able to see things for what they were better late than never. Not in the sense that she needs to take you back, but in the sense that it'll make you a better person. When we look at your when we look at your past, we tend to think if only I had done this or that differently, things would have turned out differently. But reality is we all make choices based on who we are and who our past experiences have made us. And to think we could have done it any differently is not possible because you never could be that person you are today without having gone through this experience. Can I ask what triggered you to look back and realize what you had let go? Was this a gradual process or a sudden realization? I don't think he came and answered that question. We Rat says, that's why they say the grass isn't greener on the other side. If you can't keep the grass green in your yard, you can't keep it green in another yard. See, see this as a valuable lesson for all things in life not just for relationships. Hopefully things get better for you. I'm sorry you had to go through all that heartbreak though to find out. Sometimes we humans um, tend to need to make the mistakes to learn from them no matter how much others tell us not to. Don't shut yourself off from still trying with others though. There's another saying about three great loves a person will have in their life. I'll let you look that up. Scared rhubarb at the bottom says, I keep reading these hoping it's my estranged husband wishing he would write such wonderful things about me. Our stories are so similar. I thought it was my husband writing this. I wish he realized what he had. I hope you're okay and things will get better. Um, things will get better as he works through it. He's not gonna get better by getting her back. She's not gonna come back or she shouldn't come back. She, she deserves better than this person. But hopefully this person will become a better version of himself and not let go of a woman simply because he thinks, you know what? Since she loves me so much, all these women folk out there going to love me like that. <laughs> That's that entitlement and arrogance some of these people have. Anyways, join the conversation. Let me, um, let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I'm sharing this Reddit post from two years ago because it's still appropriate today. And women have been programmed to be servants. And I know we don't call ourselves servants, but we're the ones that are typically doing all of the cleaning for holidays. We're doing all of the shopping. We're doing all of the chopping and prepping. We're doing all of the cooking. We're serving. We're doing all of the cleanup afterwards. We do everything to make the holidays magical, but it is time to pull back because men think that they are some kind of demigods or some kind of royalty where they get to relax and just hang out, watch TV, drink some beers, you know, have some fun. And women are there to serve them and serve them at their own expense. Like literally is typically the woman that's going doing the grocery shopping. So it is time to pull back a lot. 
Like I said, this Reddit thread was from two years ago. It's still appropriate today. She says, apparently it's not sexist for men to watch football on Thanksgiving while women folk prepare dinner and watch the kids. She says, I'm losing my ever effing mind at highly uploaded comments telling a woman she was rude for not wanting to be relegated to the kitchen on Thanksgiving while her boyfriend sat on his ass watching football with the men. There were literally comments saying the women weren't forced into the kitchen, so it's not sexist. Hello, do you think the men not even thinking to get off of their butts and help isn't a product of misogyny? The cherry on this sh- sandwich was that the men apparently served themselves plates and sat back down in front of the TV. I wonder in how many houses Thanksgiving dinner wouldn't happen if the women decided to sit on the couch drinking beer and watching football. She says, ETA, I've scrolled through the comments and appreciate all the people taking the time to comment on my posts. I'm not really replying or digging too hard through the comments because the post I referred to was the first one to make me really grind my teeth in a while. And the few sh- comments here were getting me spun up again, LOL, though it really did seem to be just a few. Side note, to anyone commenting, OP just had to go into the kitchen if she wanted a conversation. If you can't see the problem with women having to stand in the hot kitchen or sit in kitchen chairs to socialize while men monopolize the comfortable public part of the house and conveniently do literally nothing to help with the massive meal being cooked, I can't help you. All the women and children were watching Christmas movies in the kitchen. Why weren't the Christmas movies on the main TV in the living room? She says, ETA number two, laughing my effing butt off. Apparently, I'm a true true 2X community member because now I got my first Reddit Cares report. This person says, I've told this story before, but anyway, the first time my then girlfriend, now wife, came to my family's house for Thanksgiving, we were snuggling on the sofa after dinner and enjoying the fire, and my brother came over. The two of them had this exchange. Brother, why aren't you in the kitchen helping with the dishes? Girlfriend, why aren't you in the kitchen helping with the dishes? Brother, well, you're a woman. Girlfriend, the parts of me that make me a woman aren't normally used to wash dishes. My brother was momentarily at a loss for words, but managed to nod in agreement and admit what she said was true. And the thing is, the thing is that we as women have got to take a step back and recognize that we are more than servants, that men are supposed to help. Men are adults as well. They need to participate in some of these things, and they will not participate until we make it clear that they are responsible for the family, for making family traditions as well. So step way back and see if they pick up the mantle. And if they don't pick up the mantle, let it crumble to the floor along with the rest of the patriarchy that is being upheld by women's unpaid, undervalued, unappreciated labor. Join the conversation and let me know what you think about this. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. So this woman posted in the dating subreddit and she says meeting so many men who can't support themselves and she used the um, the flair just venting. She says, I don't know anymore. Every time I go on a date with a guy and he seems mildly interesting, it turns out his life is totally unstable, making it not really possible to have a relationship. I'm talking guys mid thirties who are very financially insecure housing insecure, live with three roommates, unemployed, etc. While I'm sympathetic, I'm also wary of getting into a relationship and being the caretaker, so I know it's a bad move for me. I don't need someone wealthy, just someone on the same level as me, and it seems like there aren't many out there. Now, I know that this is a dating subreddit, but I have a feeling that just because of politics and with the climate of social media the way it is with the red pill and manosphere and all of these insular sources running around, that they're going to end up like this anyway because they're so vitriolic, um, cannot really stand women, see women as wife appliances versus humans. And so, especially with the way the election just went, where the divergence of men and women is so pronounced, that dating is going to become challenging and we are entering um, very unstable economic times. So if you can't see women as being a partner, someone to work with, you're going to end up, you're going to see a lot of this because these men are going to have to partner up with other men in order to have a house just to live in. 
And it's, it's going to be interesting to watch going forward what living arrangement is going to look like, what our country is going to look like, and how the culture is going to be shaped, especially with 4B, especially with women talking about decentering men, especially with more women saying that they've reached that point where they're not accepting the tolerable level of permanent unhappiness and walking away. So yeah, it's going to be these men that are going to have to become roommates and, you know, do all of that just to survive. So how will they date? How will they date when they don't really seem to even like women that much? That's going to be the the question I have. And like I said, this she's talking about dating and economics and all of that, but I think it's going to be much bigger than this. And that's the reason why I wanted to do this post. All right, some of the comments. Harambee's Law says, everyone is struggling right now. It's why we aren't dating. Drink and Dice says, I'm glad this is put into words because same. Um, this person says, having roommates these days is not terrible. The cost of housing is insane. It really is insane, but you know, that doesn't mean that she should want to date someone who is housing insecure if she's financially secure. Sufficient Barry at the bottom says, five years ago, I'd have harsh feelings about it, but it's so expensive now and I can't hold it against them. 250 square foot studios in my neighborhood are $1,800. The most basic office job pays $17 to $20 an hour. People are just trying to survive and a lot of people are doing unsavory and unethical things for money. I think if they're good people, it shouldn't make a difference to me at least. And that's the important thing, the whole to me at least, because people should have the opportunity or their own standards for themselves. This particular woman, the OP, she's not going for it, but this woman, Sufficient Berry, is perfectly fine with it. Brown Eyes White Scarf says, well, guys who are stable are generally going to sound less interesting because they have prioritized stability in their lives. And the guys who are stable and good looking and or wealthy either have already found someone or wouldn't settle down for most girls. Girls. Why can't it be women? All right. Slim says there's definitely a stability to exciting ratio. This person at the bottom says, and I quote, Relationships are expensive. Choose the one you can afford. So I, yep, says, ask yourself, how are you meeting them and what factors make you consider them as a partner? Why are you attracting these types of men? So this person sounds like a man putting the onus back on her for their failings. I don't think I read where she was considering them as a partner. She just says she was meeting so many men. Um, so th this like I said, it sounds like she wants it to be on the woman, whereas, you know, this seems like this is an, a them issue, but that's how I read this. Now, Sunny Day says, have you considered the economy is really tough right now? And the OP says, yeah, but this has been a trend long before the last year or so. Like I said, I'm sympathetic. I struggled myself, but if someone is that stressed about money and just making it day to day, I think it's a, I don't think it's a good idea to get into a relationship. And I do, I do feel that that is, you know, that's some good reasoning because she is stable, I suppose, because of the way she's wording this post, she's stable. Why bring somebody that is unstable into her life? It's better to just remain um, single at that particular point. All right, y'all, just let me know what you think. Where do you land with this? I'm pretty sure based on who my um, audience is, I know how you're going to fall. But go ahead, join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.